Hello everyone, welcome to another We Supply Security how-to video. We are going to go over how to install and configure the Easy View app from Uniview. Okay, we're going to start by clicking into the Play Store and then clicking on the search box and typing Easy View into the search field. Click on Easy View as seen here and click Install to begin downloading the app. Once the app has finished installing, you will see a green button that says open. Go ahead and click that. And you can read and agree to the service agreement and privacy policy, then click agree. At this point, because this is your first time, you need to click sign up to create a new account. First, select your country of residence. And after selecting your country, enter in your email address. Make sure you have your email client open because after clicking verify, you have a 60 second window to enter in their verification code. Let's go ahead and finish typing in your email address. You'll have to click the radial button underneath verify in order for the button to illuminate. And then you can click the verify button and move to the next screen. Here is the screen requiring you to enter in your verification code. Go ahead and enter in the code that was sent to your email and then click next. Now we're just going to enter in a password. It can be any password you want, but you only enter it in one time. So make sure that you click the little eyeball icon at the end of this field to verify that you entered what you think you entered and write this password down and keep it somewhere safe. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to change your username. You don't have to do this step, but I feel that it's helpful to have a username that's more easily recognizable to you. Okay, so on this field, you can enter in a new username as long as it has not already been registered to a different account. Please note that the username is case sensitive. This will come in play later when we deal with sharing to other Uniview user accounts. Now let's exit out of this screen by hitting the back button and then the three lines to go back into the main menu. Click on device to add in your NVR, followed by the add button, and then click scan so that we can scan the QR code that's in the network menu of your NVR. Okay, so go to the easy cloud screen on the NVR and use the phone to scan the QR code that you see. After scanning the code, you'll get a page like this. Click Save, and you'll see your device is listed below. Click My Device, and then click Edit to change the name of the device to something that makes it easier to identify in the future. Once you're done, click Save, and now your device has an easier to identify common name. Click on it again, and then click Start Live View. Okay, from this point, I'm just going to kind of go over all the features that you see, starting with the Snapshot button. Clicking that takes a JPEG image of the screen. And click View to see the image. The next one is Record. This allows you to record the video that's showing up on the screen as you're viewing it in Live View. It saves this video onto your phone. And you can access these files by going into the menu and going into picture and video at any time. Next is images. This is how many cameras are being displayed on the live view at the same time, with a maximum of 16 cameras being viewed at once. Next is the quality button. You can change this between any of the streams that the camera supports. Next is the audio button. If your camera has a built-in mic or a mic option, then you'll be able to hear the audio from the camera. Then next is full screen, which allows you to view the video in landscape mode. Also, I should note that at any time you want, you can pinch zoom into the camera and you can use your finger to move the image around. And this can be done in either portrait or landscape mode. After clicking back, we can show you the two-way audio function, which is a special function supported by the TriGuard cameras or any camera with a built-in speaker. It allows you to both hear and speak through your phone. 
Long pressing this button allows you to do this through the NVR's RCA output, which would be connected to a amplifier and speaker in order to gain the same function. Hitting close all will close all of your live view screens, and then you can click resume to bring them back. And then the next is image settings. This is where you control brightness, saturation, contrast. Uh, the slide dial will adjust any of these settings. The next option is device configuration. This is an advanced menu, so typically you probably won't be adjusting here, but you can adjust things like motion settings and VCA detection. Going into motion detection, if you want to adjust the size of the motion detection window, you can select it here and by default it is full screen so if you wanted to remove some of it you would actually go to the erase icon which is the third one down on the right side clicking this you would then drag your finger across the screen to get rid of anything you don't want to have motion activated or use the pencil icon to change it back to a motion detection area click the checkbox when you're done and then when you're back on the main motion detection window, you can click back twice to get back to the settings screen. And then we can go into VCA. Uh, here you'll see a list of different options on intrusion detection. For example, you could activate it, click detection area. This particular camera has a detection box created already, but you would hit the plus icon to create a box and hit the check box to save those settings. Okay, let's go ahead and get out of this window by clicking back two times and then clicking back out of the settings and clicking the three lines at the top once again. And now we're going to click devices, click on your recorder, and then go down to where it says P2P upgrade. So this is a cloud firmware update. You can check any items that have a red dot and then click Start Upgrade and hit Upgrade to begin upgrading their firmware. Next, we'll click the recorder again, and we're now going to go to the sharing option and click the recorder itself. You can change it either by function or by role. Role, it'd be an administrator role or if you've set up other account roles, and then you can do function and you can select any of the items that you want to give a remote user the capability of adjusting. Next you click share to and it'll bring up a window and you type in the case sensitive Uniview account name. Finally click the share button. You should see share it successfully at the bottom of the screen if it worked. And now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and remove access. So go back to the menu, go to your account settings and go to My Sharing. Now you'll see a list of everyone you've shared with if you click on that and click on Cancel Sharing and then click Yes and this will remove that user from being able to access your recorder. Now let's go ahead and go back to the menu again and let's click Playback. On Playback you click any of the little plus icons on the screen then click the recorder and then the camera you would like to bring up and then you have a calendar with a date and time. Select the start time on the date that you're looking to play back. Once you find the time you're looking for, you can tap OK at the bottom of the screen. Once it has a chance to load, you will see the video playing for the start time that you selected. So you can pinch zoom on the timeline to either change the time to be more specific or more broad on when you look at the timeline itself. And this makes it easier when you pinch zoom in to select a specific time by scrolling across with your finger. You can set the quality to HD and then you can do the digital zoom function in playback as well. Next, if you click the speed button, you can change the playback speed to either be times two or times four faster, or also slower if you want to see something happening slower. You can click pause to stop the video without exiting the mode at any time. Hit play again to resume. You can hit the snapshot button to take a picture of what you're currently looking at. You can also hit the record button and save a video clip. Hitting the record button a second time will save that clip into your pictures and videos folder. If you press and hold the image, you can slide it up to the trash can icon and get rid of that playback window. 
And then if you go to pictures and videos, you can see all of the video clips and pictures you've saved. Favorites is usually used when you have multiple recorders to save favorite views. Alarm notifications is used to set up push notifications onto your phone. To activate it, click allow notifications. But when we click it, we're getting an error about push notifications. Click back, then to the menu, then to your user account, and then click general. At the top, you'll see push notification settings, and you need to allow notifications in order to let your phone push notify you when there's an alarm event. Then on system notifications, you can decide if you want to show notifications, allow sound and vibration, and whatnot. Go ahead and go back all the way to the menu, and we're going to go back to alarm notifications. Now when we click allow notifications and click the recorder, it will allow us to activate it. Then click advanced settings and then click the recorder that you want to activate it on. And then here you can select the specific camera that you want to activate for push notifications. So we'll do the TriGuard camera. The time frame is when you want to be alerted by push notification only, not the recording onto the recorder itself. It is best to utilize VCA at this point. If you do motion detection, you'll get push notifications near constantly. VCA allows you to keep those false notifications to a minimum. Okay, now we'll go ahead and click Save. And you can exit out of this. Here you see the alarm notifications that have already come through. Uh, you can filter by specific types, and you can also filter by date. Click OK. And then you see we only have the ones from today. If we go out and I go in front of the camera real quick, activate an event, clicking the film reel will bring up a video playback of the event that triggered VCA. Okay, and that is a overview of all of the features from Univue's Easy View software. You can go ahead and exit out of the software at this time. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to see all of our latest product and how-to videos at WeSupplySecurity.com.